Yeah. I just said, while I empathize with sm those small creators trying to find their way on the platform and their valid criticism, I also understand why YouTube has to make such drastic changes. YouTube has suffered critical blows for months. YouTube has been struggling to swim to the surface and breathe for more than a year. The, con the controversies have come month after month with criticism flying at the company from every angle. By the end of 2017, it seemed like advertisers couldn't trust YouTube to properly filter which creators were receiving ads on their videos. Creators couldn't trust YouTube to fix monetization issues in a timely manner. And the media outlets were having a field day with misdeeds by some of the company's most notorious faces. Logan Paul, I'm guessing. But how does this get rid of all the Logan Pauls? And all the pedophilic Elsa on Spider-Man videos of them peeing on each other. Whoops, I probably shouldn't have said peeing on each other. Don't want to get demonetized now. I even, oh, whoop, can't get the brand in there neither. So, let's do a quick calculation here. To be monetized, you need a total watch time of 4,000 hours in the past 12 months. Oh. Trying not to be rude here and talk with my mouth full. 4,000 hours in the past 12 months and a minimum of 1,000 subscribers. Okay. Let's do some calculations here. So. 4,000 divided by 12. Wait, that can't be right. Four divided by 12 months. That means you need to have 333 hours of watch time and every month for a year, I guess you could say, at least. Which isn't a huge deal if you do like 30 minute vlogs but it is a huge deal if you do one minute animations and you're trying to break through that community because animation is really expensive and if you don't have the patience to support you, you can really rely on monetization and if you do have that one video that blows up and gets 200,000 views, that could still not be enough watch time and by the time you get enough watch time, you can't even monetize all those views you just got for free. Okay, 333 divided by Four weeks. Wait, 333 divided by four. You need 83 minutes of watch time per week. Um, divide that by seven days. You need somebody to be watching your videos for 11 minutes a day. That's a lot of damn time considering how fast people click all videos on YouTube. So well, pretty much desensitizing animators or people that do very short form stuff. I mean. YouTube's gonna YouTube. It's a company just like every other company. They can do whatever the hell it wants. It's a private business. All we can do is adapt. Oh. It's getting soggy.
Well, companies' recent actions may appear to be doing the opposite. The smartest move the company did to make to protect, to protect both itself and the platform advertisers at the top of the ecosystem, not creators. How is how is only monetizing people with longer videos protecting itself from people like Logan Paul? Doesn't Logan Paul have mad watch time? How is this weeding out people with large fan bases that are ruining their reputation? Because someone that has 20 subscribers and 15 minutes of watch time in total doesn't have enough influence to make advertisers turn away from YouTube. So punishing smaller channels doesn't make sense. And that's removing all the ethics aside, by the way. So this is a business. We don't we can't talk morals and ethics. I'm just talking about the practicality. How exactly is this removing any threat of YouTube having another scandal or controversy? I mean I heard Logan Paul lost his uh a lot of sponsorships. And his YouTube Red series is on hold. It's on hold. Advertisers are at the top of the ecosystem, not creators. <laughs> wow. That's funny. You get rid of the boxer. Red Bull doesn't have a worker to put their flag on. You get rid of the worker. How will the business run? Because the workers will continue to flourish and will continue to create content with or without the boss. But the boss won't flourish without the workers, that's for sure. Advertisers will eventually stop spending on money on YouTube if they feel they can't trust a platform. All right, that's true. How does that? How does how does this new guide establish more trust? Just because YouTube did something? Any video that goes through Google Preferred, a classification that pairs top tier ads with major creators' videos, will now be watched by a human before advertising is approved. This screening process should prevent objectionable content like Logan Paul's controversial video containing footage of a dead body from being monetized. Well, that's funny because he was trending on there for quite some time before it was actually taken down.
I mean, I don't understand. Why do advertisers have no problem putting their stuff on controversial TV channels like CNN or Fox News? But all of a sudden, when creators talk about these things, it's an issue? I mean, either the brands have some kind of double standard going on or they really don't care and YouTube is just... Excuse me, winging it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. YouTube had to contend with bad press resulting from terrorism videos plaguing the site, disturbing content targeted at children, and violent and sometimes lethal prank videos gone wrong. These videos made headlines, but not before they were seen by millions of people, including children. Okay. How do you think you're going to monitor something like that? People are going to post what they're going to post on your public site. You're, you open up the uploads to everyone. I mean, the only way to really monitor something like that would be to literally have humans watch every single video before they go public. There's literally no way of monitoring or censoring a public video network that anyone can publish on. This is just gonna, this is just gonna keep happening. More dumb things will continue to happen because people upload dumb things. It's happened since the beginning of YouTube. It will continue to happen. The only difference is that somehow the media has caught on to YouTube and is like posting every single scandal that happens. Before when scandals happened on YouTube, it kind of just stayed on YouTube and the YouTube community kind of dealt with criticizing you know, like the whole Sam Pepper situation and all those other things. And now it's like the media, ever since that, that Washington Post article about PewDiePie, just every single scandal. It's just like they kind of blame YouTube for something that some public creator on a public platform posted, which I don't think that's YouTube's fault. They're not wrong for their user base. Well, yeah, definitely wrong for skewing and incentivizing certain kinds of videos and just completely demolishing the market for some kind of videos like animation videos, which I feel like, in my opinion, were one of the only things that were still of quality, you know, besides 30 minute slime videos and ASMR videos like these, you actually had some kind of creative thing to watch on YouTube that was kind of artsy. So what's going to happen with the smaller short film community? What's going to happen with animations? What's going to happen with all the people that do short form? I guess they're screwed. And you'll only have those people that are already popular now. You know, unless they start watering down their content and stretching it to 15 minutes. And just rambling the way I'm doing now. And that's the way people will adapt. And as long as YouTube keeps making these backwards policies, all you'll see is just nonsense. You won't see people putting in effort to make their videos of quality. You'll see people making their videos to just fit this mold that YouTube keeps making more and more rigid. And yeah, there was a time where YouTube didn't pay their creators and people still put in effort. Uh, but the issue is YouTube is huge now and they make tons of money. And once you start incentivizing creators to make content in exchange for monetization and actually paying them 
a slice of the revenue pie, you can't you kind of can't go back from that, especially when there's entire animation teams that rely on that chump change. You know, even the article even said something like, "Oh well, it only affected like 90% of those affected only made $100 in a year." Well, that $100 actually does mean a lot because when I got my first $50 from full screen when I first started monetizing my content in 2000 and 13, 13, 13, I was psyched because yeah, it was only $15, but I was 16 years old and it was only $50, but it's $50 is better than nothing. It was $50 that I wouldn't have had for doing something that I enjoyed doing. And it incentivized me to continue to do more in order for this to grow. And you know, a lot of people see this as a genuine job because it can really replace your income um, if you use this as a main platform for things like animation. But this is almost just like gonna be a side hustle for people now. You can just post a quick ASMR video and watch how fast the views skyrocket just because of how long the video is and just because it's some weird trend.